يقول راجع عفو رب سامعي محمد بن الجزري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف الحمد لله رب العالمين أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد رسول رب العالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا وخلقا يا رب العالمين So Allah teach us what benefit us, increase us in knowledge, in good morals and in good deeds, Ya Allah. So we finished Qalqal, alhamdulillah, last time. And today, Al-Jazariya 41, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. Uh, before we move on to the next uh, attribute or sifa, or sifat al-huruf, one last thing, or one more time about the, the, the common mistakes that some people make in Qalqala. We've, we said four common mistakes, okay? The first one we said, accompanying it with a haraka or a part of a haraka. And that is, we said, sometimes changes the meaning really badly. So we have to pay, to pay attention. You say, Fad'u'llaha, Fad'u'llaha, means pray to Allah. But if you say, Fad'u'l, Fad'a, Fad'a, as some people they want to, to do, and as some people teach, that you should make the qalqala close to the harakah of the previous letter. So here, fa, they say you have to make the dial close to that. As you can see here, they wanted to make it close to the, to the, what is it, to the fa. So fa da, da. But if you say fa da, fa da ullaha, fa da ullaha means leave Allah. See, is is very bad meaning. So you have to pay attention and not mix the qalqala with any haraka or even a smell of a haraka as you say in Arabic. Okay. Second common mistake is uh, or, or first mistake, sorry, it was ending it with a hamza or a ha. The second one is accompanying it with a haraka or part of a haraka. The third one is prolonging its time, means slowing it down, like how some people they say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ should be quick. You don't say, مُحِيطُ مُحِيطُ What is this? The qalqala letters are shadid or rikhu? Shadid or rikhu? Shadid, this is why the Arabs make qalqala for them, right? So Shadid means, Shadid means their sound is cut off, right? Shadid means the sound of these letters is cut off. So you don't say, Ahad, Muhiyyato, No, it's, it's Shadid. The sound should be cut off. Ahad, Muhiyyato, Bahij. You don't say, Bahij. Okay? Some people read this way. So don't prolong the qalqala letters because they are shadid and they are majhur. Don't slow it down. Ahad, the, no. Ahad, muhito, the hij. The next mistake is cutting it down, as you said, some students. They read tub, tum, tub, tum, liyako, ta, liyako, ta, no. Sometimes when we teach you, we, we, we cut it into parts just to show you, but it doesn't mean you read this way. Don't make a pause and don't stop. Uh, turn off the slide, please, Ya Sheikh Nabi. Turn it off so that it doesn't keep. Okay. 
cutting it or slowing it down or leaving a gap as we mentioned in the Mshaddad letters. We don't say fil hajj, fil hajj. No. You don't leave a pause there. More, more. Hala smash. Let's see. Let's see this way. Feel, uh, for example, وَقَتَرَبَ الْوَعْدُ الْحَقُّ حَقُّ No, that's too much. وَقَتَرَبَ الْوَعْدُ الْحَقُّ حَقُّ Okay, don't leave a gap, don't make a pause, don't make seconds. Now, line 26. So, Imam Ibn al-Jazari, rahimahullah, said, as you can see on the board, on the screen, so he said in line 24, صَفِيرُهَا صَادٌ وَزَايٌ سِينُ قَلْقَلَةٌ قُطْبُ جَدٍ Now, وَلِّينُ وَلِّينُ أَنْ يُصِفَ وَاوٌ وَيَاءٌ سُكِّنَا وَانْفَتَحَا قَبْلَهُمَا وَلِنْحِرَافُ صُحِّحَا لَامٌ وَاوٌ وَيَاءٌ سُكِّنَا وَانْفَتَحَا قَبْلَهُمَا وَلِنْحِرَافُ صُحِّحَا As you can see in the red color, Sheikh Ayman, may Allah reward him, he he highlighted the, the next sifa, which is al-leen. Wal-leen, that's the new sifa. Wa-wun, wa-ya-un, sukkina. Sukkina means what? Sukkina. This is passive voice. Sukkina means they were made sakin. They were made sakin. That's what sukkina means. Just like sakana, if you say sakana, means they were sakin, or they became sakin. But sukkina means we made them sakin. Okay, so he said sukkina instead of sakana just for, for the, the, the rhyme, to help fit the, the rhythm of the, of the line. Uh, sukkina, they were made sakin. When fataha, who can tell me? When fataha means became maftuh. Qablahuma, what's before them? So what is this alif here? When fataha, what is this alif? Huh? Who knows? We mentioned this so many times before. Is this the alif of the two or the alif of the dual? It's not. Why? Because we're saying wa'un wa'ya'un sukkina, the wa'u and the ya' they are sakin. Then can we say, and they are also maftuh? No. So it means, when fataha qablahuma, and what's before them is maftuh. Then why he said, when fataha, this is called alif al-itlaq. I translate it as the, the alif of release. So he released the fatha. He released the fatha. Why? To keep the rhythm of the poetry. To keep the rhythm of the poem. Okay, so when fataha, it's when fataha. Okay, we mentioned this many times before. We had many examples. Just like suhiha. Uh, no, suhiha here. Uh, yeah, suhiha, same thing as we will see in the next one. So when fataha is when fataha. I, in one of the books uh, online, I uh, uh, found that the author, he translated, he said, when fataha means the alif and the waw, they are maftuh. Uh, the wow and the ya. How? They are sakin and they are maftuh at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. So it's just maybe a slip of the tongue or a slip of the, of the hand. Okay, so when fataha means when fataha. Qablahuma. So, alin. So the line is very easy and simple. Walinu. The lean is what? When you have wow and ya, sakinatain that have sukoon and qablahuma maftuh what's before them has a fatha that's it so let's go to the details alin in arabic means what alin alin means what lean means ease just like leniency right leniency right or lenience so lean in arabic is ease remember this word lean leniency lean ease Suhula, uh, leniency. That's in, in the Arabic language. Again, as I told you last time, always the, the technical terms or the Islamic terms 
always must have, must have, must have a root or a common meaning with the Arabic meaning. This is where they bring them from because this, these terms, the Islamic terms, these are from Arabic. So they must have, they must meet the Arabic meaning in a way or another. So in Tajweed terminology, lean is what? is pronouncing or producing the letter from its mahraj with ease and without a remarkable effort from the tongue. That is the lean. You have to understand and learn these definitions. They're easy. So producing the letter means the lean letter, okay? Producing the letter. Or let's say this applies. This applies to the lean letters. Oh, it's <laughs> I already wrote it under. Okay, so this applies to the two letters of lean. Ya sakina preceded by a fatha, and wa sakina, as you can see, preceded by a fatha. Is that clear? Any question? So, lean means what? Pronouncing or producing the letter from its makhraj with ease. Easily without any remarkable effort from the tongue. What are those do lean letters? Wow sakina preceded by fatha and ya sakina preceded by fatha. How do they sound? Aw. See, is there difficulty in pronouncing this, ya shaykh? Aw, ay. There's no difficulty, right? It's easy. Aw, ay. Your tongue is not touching anywhere. You see why we're saying? That without any remarkable effort from the tongue. Your tongue is not touching anywhere. Aw, ay, right? Khawf, bayt. Is it easy or no? Is it easy or no? That's why they call it lean letters. So as you can see, this is just descriptive sifa. What does that mean? You don't have to do anything. It is just describing these letters that they come with ease. That's it. So don't make them difficult. As we will see now, some people. Khawf, khawf. They make it difficult. They round too much. Or they cut the yak. Quraysh, Quraysh, Quraysh. No, make it easy, Akhi. Quraysh, Quraysh. Okay? First example, Saw. How do you read that? Saw. You see, it, there's nothing really remarkable you have to do. Quraysh, Quraysh, Quraysh. Khawf, Bayt. And also we notice that these lean letters, they are similar to the med letters. Look, and I remember, I mentioned this to you like five, six years ago, if you remember. We said when we talk about the lean letters, we said that they are like the med letters. Say, if you say, Ooh, Ooh, and I say, Khaw, who can tell me the difference? Khaw, Khaw, What's the difference? Only the beginning. The, the lean letter starts with a A ah sound. Ha. But then it is ooh, ooh. Only the beginning differs. Then the rest is the same. This is why I told you the other day that the med letters and the lean letters, they come from the same place. From the jawf. But their beginning is different. Clear? If someone says khawf, you say khawf and make it six harakat and you say uh, su and make it six harakat. One, two, three. Oh. Ooh, see? So the, the rest is the same. Only the beginning differs. Same thing, bait. Same thing. You say bait, you say si at one, two, three. Six. You have to make four harakat. Right? And you make four harakat. One, two, three. E, see? C, B, E. So the beginning, only the beginning of the mad letters and li letters differ. Then the rest is the same. Okay? This is why, guys, keep this, take this small note for you as teachers. You have to know this. Some books and some teachers, they call the mad letters, the mad letters, they call them mad and lean letters. What do they call them? Mad and lean <coughs> letters. 
What do they mean? A U E. Alif sakina preceded by Alif sakina. Wa sakina preceded by dhamma. Ya sakina preceded by kasr. Right? We don't say Alif sakina preceded by fatha because Alif sakina always preceded by fatha. Because the Alif is always sakina and the Alif always preceded by fatha. So the A U E. These mad letters. What do the some teachers call them? And some books call them. What do they call them? They call them the letters of mad and lean. You understand? So don't get confused when you read that. And if someone tells you these are the mad and lean letters, they're not the mad letters. Say, okay, right, no problem. So the mad and lean letters together, this applies to alif wow, uh, the alif and uh, wow, second of the dhamma ya second of the seed like this. To the mad letters, we can also call them mad and lean letters. But when we say the lean letters, what are they? Wow, sakina preceded by fatha. Ya sakina preceded by fatha. Aw, ay. Clear? Now, why they call them the mad letters? Also, they call them lean letters. Same reason. A, u, e, because there's they are produced from their mahraj without a remarkable effort from the tongue. Very easy. A, u, e, ba, bu, bi, right? Same thing, the lean letters. So as I mentioned, you can see I wrote this there. The letters of med are also called sometimes letters of med and li. Why? Because, let's say, because, I might, I'm gonna, these are the questions I'm gonna ask you, by the way. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you what are the lean letters. No. Sana and Muna, maybe they know this. I'm not gonna ask you what are the lean letters, right? So this is the type of question I'm gonna ask you because, because these are the things that show that you really learned well, and you understand this science or this art of med and lean because they are also produced without, with ease, with ease. They are produced with ease, means without a remarkable effort from the tongue, from the tongue or effort by the tongue. Clear? Now, do not make the ya and wow shadid. That's the first common mistake. First common mistake. You don't say, mean khawf, khawf, don't cut it. No, it should flow, right? It should flow. The, sh the wow is not shadid, the ya is not shadid. They are what? Rikhu. Right? They are rikhu letters. They're not part of ajid patim bakat, right, sister? So you say khawf, khawf, bayt. You don't say khawf, min khawf, quraych, li ilafi quraych. No. Or, this is number one. Number two, don't, uh, don't exaggerate in them. Don't round the lips too much. Don't raise the tongue too much. Don't say khawf, khawf. خوف بيت بيت no they should come with ease okay so one more time don't make the ya and the wow shadid because they are rikhu letters that should be produced easily from their maharaj and their sound should be flowing their sound should be flowing so you don't say وآمنهم من خوف خوف no and you don't say min khawf, khawf, no. Both are wrong. Min khawf. And of course, as we'll see now, you can make it two, four, or six when you stop on it. And you don't say li ila fi quraish, quraish, no. Or quray, quray, e, no. With ease, quraish, aish, quraish. Now, when we stop on a lean letter, when we stop on a lean letter, which is followed by sukoon, temporary sukoon. What do we have? When you stop on a mad letter, when you have a mad letter followed by temporary sukoon due to waqf, what do you have? Due to stopping, what do you have? <coughs> mad arid is sukoon, right? How many harakat? Two, four, or six? Same thing exactly. When we have a lean letter followed by temporary sukoon due to stopping, due to waqf, what do we do? Same thing, mad 
But what do you call it? Mad? Maddulleen. Because it's not the mad letters, it's the lean letters. And how many harakat we prolong it? Same thing, two, four, or six. Is this clear? So this is the, the note on the screen. Uh, uh, when we stop on a lean letter, it's followed. When, when a lean letter, when we stop on a lean letter, that is followed. That is followed by sukun, arib. Sukun, arib means what? Temporary sukun due to waqf. We elongate it for two, four, or six harakat. Clear? So, two harakat. Min khawf. Min khawf. It's like say, qal. <coughs> Paul, Khawf. You don't say Min Khawf, Khawf. No, you have to prolong it. Min Khawf, Khawf, Pool, Khawf. Or Min Khawf. Right? Four harakat. Or Min Khawf. Right? So Min Khawf, Min Khawf, Min Khawf. Al-Bayt, for example. Or Quraysh. Li-ila fi Quraysh. Quraysh. Qeel. Just measure it with, with the mad letter. Qeel. You don't say Qeel. No. Quraysh. No. Quraysh. 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 Ila fi him rihlat al-shnitai wa s-sayf. Or four, was saif. Or two, was saif. Saif. Okay? Any question? So these are, this is sifatul lean. As you can see, it's just descriptive. But there are some common mistakes that some people do. So try to avoid them. Okay. So next sifa, sifa number 13, is alin hiraf. Alin hiraf, in the language, Deviation, deviation, turning, okay? When you're driving and they tell you, for example, in harif, yamin, and they want you to tell, they want to tell you turn right, they say in harif. That's the verb, in hiraf, that's the noun. So, in alin hiraf or deviation. What is alin hiraf? The deviation in the sound of the letter because the tongue blocks its flowing. And this happens only in the lam and the ra. So al-inhiraf in the language is what, again, you see, always, always, as we mentioned, in Arabic, or the technical term, or the, termino the terminology, will be like the, the Arabic meaning. Al-inhiraf in the language is what? Deviation, turning. In tajweed, the deviation, or the turning, we can say. Okay? In the sound of the letter, why? Because the tongue blocks its flowing. And this happens in the lam and the wa. Is that clear? Again, this is just descriptive. As you can see now in the pictures, they're just describing the lam and the wa. So we're still in line 26. <coughs> After he said, Now what does he say? Inhiraf means what? Deviation. Suhiha. What is this alif? Huh? Sister, what is this alif? Well, inhiraf or suhiha. Is it the alif of the dual? No, because al inhiraf means deviation. It's a word that indicates singular. Suhiha. It doesn't mean they both were corrected. No. Suhiha is suhiha. But this alif is for al itlaq So suhiha is originally what? Is originally like this, suhiha. Right? And in fataha is originally just. In fataha is originally what? In fataha. So suhiha is what? Means suhiha. Well, inhiraf or suhiha means has been made correct in what? Inhiraf is correct means it's existent where? Fillami warra. Well, inhiraf or suhiha 
فِاللَّامِ وَرَّا That's it. That's the next sifa. وَالْإِنْحِرَافُ صُحِّحَا فِاللَّامِ وَرَّا Does it try to say وَرَّا? Of course. So he didn't say وَرَّا. Why? Why? That is قَصْر. Called قَصْر, right? That is called قَصْر. We mentioned many examples. We've come across many examples in Jazariya for this, right? Why is that? Why he said warra instead of warra? Is that a, a correct Arabic dialect? Yes. Is it? Do we read this dialect in Hafs? Who can give me an example in Hafs? Who can give me an example in Hafs? For, for Qasr. Do we say Alif Lam Ra or Ra? See, even in Hafs we have Qasr, but many people they don't know. So we say ra. Do we say ta ha or we say ta ha? See, so that's an Arabic correct Arabic dialect. Ba ta tha. Even when you teach the letters, it's better teach them this way. Ba ta tha. You know why? Because we don't need that hamza there. So that when they read the muqatta letters, the letters that are read uh, as letters in in in. Uh, in the Quran, in the beginning of some surah, so they know they read it right, right away. Just tell them read these letters as you, as you read the alphabet. So they they're not gonna say ta ha. They're gonna read that way ta ha. Got it? And if they if they if they know it as ta ha, what do we tell them? Tell them drop the hamza. Okay. So why he said filami warra ya sheikh here? And instead of saying warra, warra, he said warra to keep the rhythm. Because if he said warra fillami warra wa bi takrir in jail, the wazan is broken. The rhythm is broken. So he used this dialect to fit the rhythm, which is a correct dialect. So, wal inhiraf wa suhiha fillami warra. Yalla, let's see in pictures how is this inhiraf. Let's start with the lam. Again, you know the lam is from adna al hafa to muntah al hafa, from daf. Near to the end of the edge of the tongue, from the near to the end of the edge of the tongue, touching, touching the roof of the mouth or the the hard palate, right? Touching the hard palate or the gum. That is the lamb. How is the sound uh, making? How is the sound turning or deviating? Why is the sound turning or deviating? Number one. First question, why is the sound turning or deviating? Look at the picture and see. Why the sound of the lamb is turning? Al, in the definition, what did we say? Because what? Because the tongue is blocking, it's flowing. So the tongue is blocking from here, as you can see. This part of the tongue, the front edge of the tongue, if you like, the near of the edge, is blocking, is touching the, the gum. This is why the sound is blocked from here. So what does it do, ya sister? As you can see, it turns to the right and to the left. That is the turning or inhiraf. Same thing here. This is how it happens in the mouth, right? Here it's blocked, as you can see, and the sound will go from the right and the left sides. See here also, same thing. All these pictures to show you exactly. From different from different ways of looking at it. Clear? Now we'll see the video. But before that, let's also see the ra. See the ra now. Who can tell me? Again, why is the sound of the ra? Or why is that? Yeah, the sound of the ra is deviating or turning. Again, because the tongue is blocking. But here, as you know. The tongue, the near to the end of the tongue, warra yudanihi. The ra is from the same makhraj of the lamb, close to it. But the difference is what? Okay. We must leave a gap here, right? On the tip of the tongue, we must leave a gap and not touch completely all this area with the roof or with the gum. Why? Because if we if we do that, then the ra will be shadid. We'll see. It will be cut off, but it's not, it's a baini letter. 
That this this same picture explains why it's a baini letter because part of the sound sneaks out, right? We explained this before in the baini letters. Same thing here. Same thing here. See, the sound only goes through that gap, and that's the main thing to make the rock correct is to leave this gap, right? So as you can see here, the inhiraf in the ra is opposite to the inhiraf in the lam. In the inhiraf in the ra, the sound is going to the sides, right, sister? But in the lam, it's going to the middle, as you can see here. It's blocked from here, from here, but it's going from this tiny gap or tiny space. Is this clear? Who can tell me practically? Do we have to teach the little kids who are just learning the Quran this sifa? Never even mention it for them, right? Never even mention this sifa for them. I told you what are the main sifat you have to teach the kids. But for you, you have to know. You have to know that. This helps you in understanding the makhraj and, and, and when you read books or someone tells you, you have to know that. So we don't do something like we turn our tongue or we do anything. No, just learn the makhraj of Dara and the Lam and, and automatically you, the inhiraf will be there. Look at the comparison between the two sisters. The ra, it's inhiraf to the inside, while the lamb, is, it's inhiraf is to the outside. Any question? Inhiraf of the ra is inwards, while inhiraf of the lamb is outwards. Is that clear? Okay. Let's see a quick video also. See how. Look how the inhiraf. What is that, lamb or ra? Huh? Yeah. That's the lamb. You see how the sound is going? See how it's going to the blocked from here, going from the right and the left? Here, same thing. See how it's going from the right and the left? <coughs> it's very clear, right? L, L, L. Practically, you don't have to do anything. Just do the lamb as you learned. Touch the, with the, near to the end of the edge, touch them with the, touch the gum with them, or with it. Al, al, right? Now the ra is exactly the opposite. Ar, 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 try. Ar, 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 ar. Clear? Okay, now see the two together, the comparison. The lamb to the outside, the ra to the inside. Who can tell me which has more inhiraf? Which has more inhiraf? If, if we want to say, to ask such a question. Ra. Huh? Ra? What do you think? The lamb, because the ra only, the sound coming through a tiny space. In the lamb, we have inhiraf to two directions. Right? That doesn't change anything. That's just descriptive, okay? Any questions so far? So, qalqalatun qutbujadin قطب جد واللين وون ويا سكنا وانفتح قبلهما والانحراف صحيحا في اللام والراء ناو هي سيز وبتكرير جعل وللتفشي الشين ضاد نستطل وبتكرير جعل وللتفشي الشين ضاد نستطل سو نيكست صفه از التكرير صفه نمبر 14 از التكرير تكرير مينز وات تكرير ريبيتيشن the creed means what? Repetition. So let's see what he said here. Just two words he summarized the sifa or he mentioned the sifa. So who can tell me literally what this word means? Wa means what? And. Be. With. Sometimes it means. So means with takrir. With. Takrir. What is it with takrir? Put this one here. Bi takrir means what? With takrir. Ju'il. Ju'il, it has been made. It has been made. Okay? Tamam. So ju'il means what, sister? Made. Who was made with takrir? Now in Arabic, when they don't mention, when they don't, they don't mention the noun, here it is passive voice. Ju'il, it was made, it has been made. Who? Just like you say, ukilat, 
If you say ukilat, means it was ate, it was eaten. Who or what? So we look at the last noun that is mentioned before that word. So here, what is the last noun? Is dara, right? So who or what has been made with takrir is dara. Clear? Fillami warra wa bi takririn ju'il. Who? Who ju'il? Dara. So this is literally what this, these two words mean. Means the lam, uh, sorry, dara has been made with, with what? Takrir. Now, what is takrir? Takrir is repetition. This is why one of the main rules for memorizing the Holy Quran is what? Takrir. Oh, takrar. 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 Repetition, repetition, repetition. You karrir. You karrir. And in the Quran we have karratan. Huh? Karratan. Falaw anna lana karratan, they say. Karratan. They want to have another turn, another return, a return to the world. But they will not be given that, right? This is your only chance, guys. This is your only chance. Our only chance. Either you win or you lose. No, no other chance. Right? So, a takrir is repetition. In the Tajweed terminology, very important, this is very important because some people and some teachers, they teach it in a wrong way. And they, they understand it in a wrong way. Takrir is repetition, but doesn't mean you're going to have many ra'at. No. Look at this nice definition for the ra, for the takrir. That I concluded from Sheikh Ayman's definition. So these are my words. It's the hardly noticeable trembling of the front part of the tongue. It's hardly noticeable trembling of the tongue, of the front part of the tongue. I didn't say repetition, okay? Trembling, and hardly noticeable, trembling. Arr, see? Arr, we're not saying arr, arr, right? This is why we said the hardly noticeable trembling of the front part of the tongue. Arr, if you focus well, you see, like little, that is the takrir that is meant here. And again, this is descriptive sifa. He's just describing it. And why we have that? Who can know? Why the tongue is like doing like this? Why? Because the sound is coming through a tight makhraj as we have just as we have just seen, right? Because the the tongue is blocked from the front, and there's only this little gap. So when the sound goes through this little gap, this is. It, it shakes or trembles this way. But that never means it's touching many times. No, it's just touching one time, but because the air is coming only through this small passage, it's, it's making the tongue Okay, Try. 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 يركعون يرجع يرجع okay so let's read again التكرير is repetition it's the hardly noticeable trembling of the front part of the tongue trembling or shuddering right shuddering almost same word I think right and rumbling huh and rumbling 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 not trembling not trembling Trembling is fine? Yeah. Okay. When we pronounce the ra, due to its tight makhraj, that's it. That's a question I'm, I'm going to ask you, okay? Huh? I'm gonna, that's a question that I'm going to ask you in the test. That's the type of question I like, such questions, right? So why, why do we have the sifa in the ra? Right, Ya Sheikh? Why do we have takrir in the ra? You tell me. Because of its tight makhraj. Then I can tell you, explain that. So this way you have to explain to me the makhraj of the ra. So, notice the tight makhraj of the ra. Look in these pictures. Again, if you understand makharij, you will understand sifat. Look at this real picture. See this small gap? 
of the rock. This is how when the tongue touches. This is same thing, right? So this part of the tongue, which is the front part of the tongue, touching this part of the gum, which is the end of the gum ridge, as we mentioned in Maharaj Haruf in details. So this area from here, from here, is touching each other. And the sound is sneaking from here, as we saw now in the inhiraf of the ra as well. Right? So here, no gap, no, no touching. Means there's a gap. Is that clear? Did we... Where is the other picture? Oh, let's get the other picture again here also. Let's get the other picture also that has the inhiraf of the ra. See here? Huh? Let's take it again here. Copy. Again, you see how much we're repeating after all this? Allah ya'ina is a map ninja. So make sure you will not fail the exam. See how the, the sound, how the tight makhraj ya how all the sounds coming from here, this will make the will make the repetition, right? In the rock. That little, slight, hardly noticeable trembling of the letter. Yeah. This trembling of the raw should never be exaggerated because that results in producing more than one raw. Yarr. No. Right? At the same time, we can learn from this. Let me add this also. At the same time, we can learn from this that... Uh, we can learn from this... From this sifa That... The tongue must touch the gum. So when we say the ra, it should it must touch. If you don't touch, there will not be that slight trembling. Okay? I just have this idea. So you cannot say we mentioned this mistake before, of course, but now from another another way to to highlight that mistake that some people say, they say ar ar. So here there, is, there isn't any repetition, right? Because the tongue is not even touching, right? right? Or like the English ra, it touches a little bit, right? Like re, 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 it's not, it doesn't even touch, right? So we can learn from this sifa that as we can also learn, we can also learn from this sifa that the tongue must touch the gum. Okay, and not be, not be like an English, like in the English ra, for example, English R. Is this clear? Okay, so don't make many ra'at. We should pay extra attention to this when the ra has shed. So Imam Ibn al Jazari, rahimahullah, is mentioning in the same poem that especially when the ra has shadda pay attention don't make many ra'at so don't make takrir in the sense that don't make takrir that makes more than one ra so you don't say ar rah okay this is why imam al jazari said rahimahullah wal khulf fi firq al kasr yujadu wa akhfi takriran idha tushadda he saying Hide the takrir, hide the repetition, especially when it has shadda, when the ra has shadda. Here he's saying, hide the takrir. And in, in this line that we're explaining today, he's saying, with takrir. So what does that mean? That's the question I'm going to ask you. So who are they, how do you understand these two lines? Here he's saying, wa bi takrir in jual, and the ra is made with takrir. And here he's saying, wa akhfi takriran, hide the takrir. If it is mushaddad, means particularly if it is mushaddad. So how do you understand that? In this line he's saying with takrir it is made, means the ra is made with that little tiny slightly hardly noticeable repetition or trembling of the tongue that you have to have in the ra because of its type mahraj. While here he's saying hide the takrir in what sense? Don't make repetition. 
don't make more than one ra, especially when it has a shadda. Is that clear? Clear? So don't be surprised that uh, he's using the same word but in different. In the Quran, this is mentioned many times. In the Quran, الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم. Those to whom people said that people has gathered against you. People, الناس here and الناس here, but this is different from this. This one, this word is about the hypocrites, and this one is about the disbelievers and their allies, etc. So sometimes the same exact word could mean two different things. Okay? We can also learn, okay, we mentioned this. So, then he says, Two more sifat and one extra sifat. Three more sifat, then we finish this section, inshallah, for sure. If Allah wills, next time will be our last class of sifat. Then we will have the test after that, inshallah. So get ready from now. So we stopped here. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to recite the Quran in the way that pleases him and pleases his messenger, pleases his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and pleases our sheikhs who taught us and who dedicated their lives to pass this great Quran to us in the same way they got it from their sheikhs back to our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who understand the Quran and implement it and pass its great teachings to others. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi wa sallam.